Still no condemnation from Republican leaders today after a video surfaced of Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert making horrific Islamophobic comments about one of her Democratic colleagues. Boebert suggesting she was scared to get on an elevator with Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, who is Muslim, because she was worried Omar might blow it up. Yes, that's right. Uh, as CNN Sunland Sirfani reports, uh, Boebert is now apologizing to anyone she may have offended in the Muslim community uh, as other disparaging remarks of hers emerge. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert making an Islamic phobic suicide bomber joke about being in an elevator with Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. I look to my left, and there she is, Ilhan Omar. And I said, well, she doesn't have a backpack. We should be fine. Suggesting she was concerned Omar would blow up the elevator. So we only had one floor to go, and I was like, ah, do I say it or not? I looked over, and I said, oh, look, the Jihad squad decided to show up for work today. The now viral video was posted by Patriot Takes, affiliated with left-leaning groups, claimed to have been shot over Thanksgiving break. Omar responding, saying the whole story is made up and calling Bobart a buffoon. Sad she thinks bigotry gets her clout. Anti-Muslim bigotry isn't funny and shouldn't be normalized. Congress can't be a place where hateful and dangerous Muslim tropes get no condemnation. Today, Bobert tweeting an apology saying she's reached out to Omar's office to speak with her directly. I apologize to anyone in the Muslim community offended with my comment about Representative Omar, adding, there are plenty of policy differences to focus on without this unnecessary distraction. But Bobert did not apologize for other incendiary remarks made during the same event, including a homophobic remark about Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg taking paternity leave. He wasn't even put in charge of the supply chain crisis. You no, know, someone else was tapped for that because Mayor Pete is still at home trying to figure out how to chest feed. <laughs> Somebody ought to tell him so he could get back to work. GOP leadership has been silent in response so far to the series of derogatory comments by Republican Congressman Kidzinger calling Boebert trash. Cancel culture isn't just to keep us quiet. It's to stop the very plan and movement of God Almighty. This isn't the first time that Boebert, who entered Congress with this provocative video, has made inflammatory remarks. I will carry my firearm in D.C. and in Congress. Most recently, Boebert defended Congressman Paul Gosar before he was censured by the House for tweeting an anime video depicting him of killing Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. The left has nothing else to do but troll the internet looking for ways to get offended. Turning her floor speech into a tirade, singling out Democrats like Omar. The Jihad Squad member from Minnesota has paid her husband, and not her brother husband, the other one, over a million dollars in campaign funds. This member is allowed on the Foreign Affairs Committee while praising terrorists. And this afternoon, Congresswoman Omar called on House leadership to take action against Boebert. She says that normalizing this bigotry endangers her life and the life of all Muslims across the nation. She did not mention specifically Boebert's apology today, nor, Jim, did she mention if her office has heard from the other congresswoman. Jim. All right, Sunland Sirfati, thanks so much. Let's discuss with uh, our panel, former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent and Democratic strategist Maria Cardona. Um, Congressman, you know, looking at that video, I can't tell if it's a member of Congress or somebody performing at MAGA open mic night. Uh, but, you know, it's a holiday week. Uh, it would take about 60 seconds to tweet out a statement condemning those comments. And it's crickets from every Republican leader in Congress. W what's going on? Well, Jim, first, there is really no place for these ki kinds of ad hominem personal attacks. And in this case, it was clearly an Islamic uh, Islamophobic attack. Look, it's incumbent upon leaders of the House uh, to maintain and enforce standards of conduct. I was chairman of the Ethics Committee. I used to have to deal with situations like this. Fortunately, not that often. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's better for Republicans to deal with these things internally. And I, I felt that there has been a, a major failure in that regard, not only with respect to Congressman Bo Boebert in this case, and I'm glad she's apologized, but Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar more recently when they make these kinds of incendiary, inflammatory st statements, it's really important for the Republican leaders to crack down on it, deal with it internally. The Republicans should have taken Marjorie Taylor Greene off the committees. They shouldn't have let that thing go to the House floor, uh, as an example. Uh, but they didn't. Uh, and 
And then I served with John Boehner and Paul Ryan, and I watched them deal with members who became embarrassments or distractions. And they took strong action against them, often forcing members to resign. But too many members these days uh, don't feel much shame and then figure out a way to monetize uh, their bad behavior. Yeah, the trolling is the point, really, more than anything else, Maria. And if Lauren Boebert worked in pretty much any other place, uh, she would be fired for this. Uh, but it's the vo voters who ultimately have to decide whether to fire her. Um, what are your thoughts on, on why Republican leaders are silent right now on this? Because they're absolutely spineless, Jim. And there clearly are not enough like Charlie Dent or like Adam Kinsinger, who really is the only one who tweeted out uh, that Lauren Boebert is trash, and he's right. And they need to step up to the plate if they want to be considered real leaders. But the problem is, who is it that they are following? Whose example is it that she is following? It's Donald Trump. And we know that Donald Trump is still the leader of the Republican Party. And un until that changes, these kinds of comments are going to continue to be things that we're going to see. And I hope that we do not normalize this, because these comments are so, so just completely disgusting, inappropriate. She is an affront to her district, to her state, to her country, to her party, frankly, to all decent humans all over the world. And I think what it represents, Jim, is, and Charlie mentioned this, the, the lack of shame that Republicans have these days. And that is not something that we need to be allowing in our leaders. She was talking about a fellow member of Congress. Like you said, it looked like she was doing a stand-up comedian act. And you know what is even sadder about what happened during that whole rally speech is that she said it and her voters laughed. They right. laughed, Jim. So yeah. until that stops, we're going to continue to see this, these kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, some of these more extreme members of the caucus are rewarded for this uh, activity. Congressman Lauren Boebert, you know, she tweeted out sort of this half-hearted apology saying, you know, to anyone in the Muslim community I offended uh, with my comment about Representative Omar. Uh, we're not seeing uh, an apology to Congresswoman Omar, though. I mean, that is, that is what an apology is. You apologize to the person you offended by calling them, uh, you know, a bomber or whatever, you know, she was suggesting. Yeah, I, again, yeah, it sounded like a, somewhat of a half-hearted apology. I agree. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I get back to the question of standards of conduct. Yeah. Um, you know, when men bring discredit upon the House, uh, that's when the leaders have to act. And, and, and sadly, it's just not occurring enough. And I mentioned earlier, I watched John Boehner and Paul Ryan and Nancy Pelosi deal with members uh, who became real distractions and embarrassments and, and did far less uh, and were forced. So how did we get here, do you think, Congressman? How did we get here? Yeah. I think I think the standards bar has been lowered, and I think you can you can thank the former president for that, uh, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, because mm -hmm. he he made so many outlandish statements on a daily basis that I think we all became somewhat numb to it. Uh, you know, before if a member of Congress had made a statement like this, it would be quite a an outcry, and it would be a, a big deal. But this will just be a you know a few news cycles, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, but before Donald Trump, uh, before Donald Trump, these were much bigger bigger issues. And they cause a lot more internal turmoil. Since Donald Trump, you know, we've become numb, desensitized because we heard we heard it so often, uh, and um, and nothing seems to surprise us anymore or shame us.